Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong episode 116. And if you haven't seen my videos before, I review everything on a 1 to 5 scale. 1 is the worst, 5 is the best. So let's jump right into it. We start the show a little bit differently. We've been starting with interviews to start the show the past couple weeks. But this one we went right into a match. We have Peter Avalon going up against Kiata. And this was a really fun and fantastic match to start the show with. Peter Avalon's a really good wrestler. He kind of gets lumped into a comedy type gimmick but he pulls it off well and he's really good in in between the ropes uh if you watch him on AEW, like dark and elevation he mostly wrestles on you get to see that weekly he does have some of the some of the comedy to him and there's a place for that kiata in my opinion looked really great here and he made kiata look like a star in the on the rise and the one thing i will say that i I didn't like about this match. Peter Avalon picks up the win here. I would have put Kiata over just because a win over Peter Avalon doesn't hurt Peter Avalon, but it helps Kiata. Whereas a win over Kiata doesn't really change Avalon's standing in New Japan because he's not there often. So in my opinion, I think they should have went with Kiata. Not that it the hampers the match. I thought the match was very good. I'm giving this match a four. Like I said, I thought it was really good. Now going from that, we get a tag team match. The, uh, the team representing Bullet Club of Chris Bay and El Fantasmo going up against Mascara Dorada and Blake Christian. Again, another fantastic match on the card. This is my favorite match of the night. I thought it was really, really fun. Chris Bay and LP are awesome. I love them as a team. I like to see them take a run at the Junior Tag Team Championships in, in New Japan at some point, or even like the Impact Tag Team Championships. I think they're that good. I think they're fun. They're interesting. They complement each other well. They have a kind of swagger to them that a lot of teams don't. And what can I say on the other side? Dorada, criminally underused when he was in WWE, a guy that I think has a lot more to to bring to the table than what he's been able to show blake christensen or blake christian i don't know why i call him blake christensen if i did more than once i'm sorry but blake christian i'm still a little dumbfounded at myself he's been a guy that's really been tearing it up absolutely everywhere he's shown up in all different kinds of places i really enjoy his work and i think he's a guy that's always going to give you a good match always going to put his best on the table. The Bullet Club team of LP and Chris Bay pick up the win here. I'm going to give this one a four. I thought it was rather good as well. I really enjoyed this match. Going from that, we get an impassioned interview with Fred Rosser talking about his upcoming match next week with Jay White, where the strong openweight champion goes up against the IWGP champion. He knocked it out of the park here. This, to me, has been the, if you could say, the weak spot in Rosser's game is he's not that great at promos. And I'm not saying he's going to go out there and out-promo Ric Flair. But in this, he did exactly what he needed to. He came off as serious. He came off as someone that cared about the business, that wanted to be the top of the business. It felt proper, it felt right to his character that he would want to chase Jay White, that Jay White would be the, the guy that he looks to as where he wants to be. And that's when you get the best promos. When the promo fits the character, you don't necessarily have to go out there and be The Rock or Steve Austin, but if you could talk in your voice, you're going to connect with the fans. You're going to connect even if they don't believe with or agree with you. You're going to connect with them because they could see the authenticity. And everyone could see that Fred Rosser is trying to be a top-tier talent. This is a fantastic interview. Now going from that, we get into our main event, which is Homicide versus Tom Lawler. Tom Lawler, again, a guy that just got out of a feud with Fred Rosser. In my opinion, he's the ace of New New Japan Strong, he's the guy that's been the big star coming out of the company from the beginning. This, I really like this match as well. You had a little bit more of a Clash and Styles type match here with Homicide bringing more brawling to the table where Tom Lawler is bringing more wrestling to the table. Not that both can't do everything. They're both fantastic wrestlers. This is a really fun match. The, the tease with the fork being used was fun in there. I really enjoyed this. I loved I love Homicide. I think he's another one of those guys that's criminally underrated that his impact on this generation in wrestling is probably more than most people know. There's probably half the roster, half of your favorite wrestlers probably patterned at least some of their skills, some of their talents after Homicide. 
whether it be his run in Ring of Honor or his run in, run in TNA. He's just a fantastic wrestler and a fantastic character and another person, much like I just said with Fred Rosser, that the gimmick feels true to who he is. Tom Waller, same way. His gimmick feels true to who he is. Again, much like the first match, I was a little surprised with the outcome. Homicide does pick up the win here. I'm kind of surprised that anybody outside of the major New Japan talent would get a win over Fred Ross, or I'm sorry, over Tom Lawler, or Fred Rosser for that matter. Just because of the fact that Homicide's not really a New Japan talent, he's more of a free agent, whereas Tom Lawler is being booked as one of the top guys in, in New Japan Strong. So that, that did surprise me a bit. We've seen after that uh, Homicide tried to attack him even though he went after the belt which brought out Danny Limelight, who's been aligned with both of them. I'm giving this match a four. I thought it was really good again. After that, we go to a backstage interview with Danny Limelight and Tom Waller. Tom Waller doesn't say anything. Danny Limelight takes, takes over here, and he really shines. Again, I mentioned it with, with Fred Rosser and just what I was talking about with these last two guys. Danny Limelight laid out a promo like he was Danny Lime. He made you believe in him. He made you believe in his character. He made you believe that he liked, he has respect for both Homicide and Tom Lawler. However, since Tom Lawler stuck with him longer, that's the guy he's going to ride with and that he's upset with Homicide for trying to come in between that. Really interesting, kind of neat how he, how he said that, or basically challenged Homicide but still was giving him the respect that he says he still respects him and he it's a business thing, it's nothing personal. I thought that was really good. I Again, just another fantastic way. More character development, which I can always accept on these shows. Like I said, I loved it over the last couple months. And this is may, may have been what their plan was all along, but the... The pandemic may have derailed the original plan. They've infused more of this character building stuff into the show, as long with the, the fantastic matches, which to me makes it a much better show. It gives it that extra mm. It's like you have a, a prime rib steak, and then you got a really good baked potato with it. The steak on its own is going to be fantastic. You're going to love it. But it's a much better dinner when you have that ba perfectly baked baked potato with some butter or sour cream or however you like your baked potatoes as a side to this steak. And that's what they're starting to do now. They're starting to bring in those baked potatoes, which would be the interviews, to go along with the steak, which is the in-ring work that they have. I thought the show altogether was fantastic. Again, I, I say this every week, it's a broken record. I could, I probably should just cut and paste one and put it in at the end of these videos. New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong is my favorite weekly wrestling show. Overall, as you could guess by all three of the, the matches being rated exactly the same, I'm going to give them the whole card a four. I thought it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys are checking out the show as well. I hope you guys are enjoying New Japan Strong as much as I do. With all that being said, let's smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, share the video, and if you made it all the way to the end, we talked about it a lot here, put realness in the comments to let me know you made it here. With that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, episode 116.